Hello and welcome to this time of prayer and worship on VE Day, the 8th of May, when we remember that 75 years ago, uh, victory in Europe was declared following the Second World War. We have this chance to gather and to worship and to pray, to give thanks for that great day 75 years ago, to be aware of where we are now and also to pray uh, for our own lives and for the lives of our nations. Uh, that we may experience greater peace and reconciliation in the future. Hopefully, wherever you are accessing this from, you'll have found the link uh, somewhere in the comments uh, to be able to find the liturgy for this service, and you'll be able to follow along if you wish to um, with the responses that are printed in bold. Um, but however you're accessing this, however you're engaging with this, we'll just pause for a moment in quietness as we prepare to pray and to worship. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God has been our refuge and our strength, our present help in time of trouble. Dear friends, we have come together on this day to commemorate the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe, when the sounds of war fell silent on this continent. We come together conscious of our need for God's forgiveness for the sin and the desire to dominate others, that leads to conflict between people and war between nations. And as we remember the many soldiers, sailors and airmen who gave their lives restraining evil and opposing tyranny, so we also come in thanksgiving for the years of peace that the nations of Europe have enjoyed since the Second World War. We gather joyfully today as those who gathered on that first victory day, glad of each other's company, and grateful for the laughter and love that follows times of sadness and loss. But above all things, let us pray that God's will may be done on earth as it is in heaven, as we join our voices together and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading on this occasion is from the book of the prophet Micah, chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. In days to come... The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised up above the hills. Peoples shall stream to it, and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples, and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into ploughshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading from the New Testament comes from St Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, beginning at, the verse, at verse 16. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. 
So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On this day, of course, we do give thanks uh, for all that God has done in and through history. We give thanks that 75 years ago, the guns of war fell silent in Europe and peace broke out, as it were. But of course, as we look back at history, we don't only look at what happens one day 75 years ago, but are aware that in those 75 years since, there has continued to be war indeed in Europe and around the world. And those continue to be conflict uh, in Europe and again around the world. But also we have to be aware and self-conscious enough to know that there has been conflict in our own lives. And while we give thanks for what's happened on the global stage, on the national stage and so on, all these things begin with us. The, the change that God brings about begins in the human heart. It surely rings throughout the universe. And that's why St Paul is able to say in that letter to the church in Corinth that whenever anyone is in Christ, whenever the, the individual human life and experience becomes one that is utterly tied up with Christ, there is a new creation. That word in Greek there, the ktisis for creation, the word ktisis means the whole cosmos, everything that God has created. When a human heart is changed and is united to God through Christ, actually we see a glimpse of this whole new recreated cosmos there. So on this Victory in Europe Day, when we give thanks for that victory, but are aware of the continued flawedness of human history, and as we continue through this time of pandemic and see the fragility of human society and culture and economy and politics and so on. We, uh, we give thanks for what has been. We pray in thankfulness and hope for what will be. But we are called again to our own hearts to ask how may I today be reconciled to God afresh and reconciled to my neighbour and reconciled to my own human existence, as small as it is, we're called to that reconciliation afresh, because when you and I are reconciled afresh to God in Christ, there is a new dawning of the new creation that God wills to bring about in my life, but also in the society in which I live. When I am reconciled afresh to God in Christ, something new happens here in Kempston, here in this United Kingdom, here in this great starry universe that God has created. And so we are called uh, to give thanks for the past, but to face the future again, knowing that in this moment we're called to a new reconciliation to God. Let us pray. And as we pray, we may make these prayers our own. And the response to the words that I say, may God give peace, is God give peace. And so let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the servicemen and women who died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God, may God give peace. God give peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. May God give peace. God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends and all who pray for their safe return, may God give peace. God give peace. For civilian, civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, 
calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. May God give peace. God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek seek to keep this world secure and free. May God give peace. God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. God give peace. The God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. We return now to an act of commitment. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit. Give us wisdom. Give us courage. Give us hope. And keep us faithful now and always. Amen. O Lord our God, as we remember, teach us the ways of peace. As we treasure memories, teach us to hope. As we give thanks for the sacrifices of the past, Help us to make your future in this world, until your kingdom come. Amen. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle in the hearts of all people the true love of peace, and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquillity your kingdom may go forward, till the earth is filled with the knowledge of thy love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, bless our Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, and all who are in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour of your name and the good of your church and people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth and all people, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. It's been good to worship with you. I pray that you are enjoying this day of celebration and I look forward to joining with you in prayer and worship again soon. Thank you very much.